just at this time, one of the buccaneers came to. Oh, well, what's this? Hawkins, is that you? He got to his feet, unsteadily to be sure, and came after me. The ship rolled and pitched on the water, and the buccaneer came close to the side of the ship. He lunged at me. I ducked quickly, and he went over the side into the sea. Ah! His shouts woke the second watchman. He drew himself to his feet and sized up the situation quickly. He came toward me. I drew out a pistol I had brought with me and pointed it at the man. I took aim and pulled the trigger. But nothing happened. The pistol was useless with seawater. I drew another pistol. Quickly I primed it and put in new shot. He saw me doing it and knew I had the upper hand. He reached into his belt and drew a dagger. It flew out of his hands toward me. Something sang like an arrow through the air. I felt a blow and then a sharp pain and his dagger pinned me by the shoulder to the mast. In pain and surprise, my fingers tightened on the trigger. The buccaneer choked and slipped across the deck, over the side and into the water, dead. I was alone on the ship. I noticed there was a small current running in the water. And now the ship, loose in the water, rode the current gently like a leaf on the top of the water. It rode that way for hours, until finally the ship floated clear down to the southwest end of Treasure Island and came to rest quietly on a sandbar there. Now, it happened that this part of the island was completely out of sight of John Silver and his buccaneers. By now, night had fallen. I tried to make my way back to the stockade, but I became lost. I kept going in the direction I thought would bring me to the stockade, when all of a sudden, I stumbled on the root of a tree. I fell, and a shrill voice suddenly broke forth in the darkness. Ah, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Ah. It was John Silver's parrot, and his cries woke up the camp. So... It's Jim Hawkins, is it? Shiver me timbers. Dropped in to see us. Friendly like, eh? That's fine. That's just fine. <laughs> they kept me at the camp overnight. And the next morning... Well, Jim Hawkins, let's see what we'll do with you, my lad. At this moment, one of John Silver's men, Sam Morgan, stepped up. A word with you, Silver. Captain Silver, Mr. Morgan. Not quite, John Silver. The men have asked me to speak to you. Oh, they have, have they? What about? First of all, you've made a hash out of this cruise. We came here with you for treasure, and we haven't gotten it. Second, the doctor came here to talk with you yesterday. This was news to me, of course. And it had probably taken place while I was out at the ship. The doctor came here, and you let him go free again. You let him out, and we want to know why. Third, John Silver, it looks like we're never going to see England again. At least not on the Hispaniola. What do you mean? The ship is gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? It's right out there. Why? Shiver me timbers. It is gone. You've bungled the whole job, John Silver. And the men and me mean to have it out with you. Now, nah, just a minute, me buckos. Bungled, have I? <coughs> oh, what about this? Silver took a rumpled piece of paper out of his pocket and waved it around. I recognized it immediately. It was the map to the treasure. So we haven't got the treasure. We will soon, mateys. We soon will. This here's the map that will show us where it's hid. Captain Flint's map. The map that Billy Bones had with him. So stow your tongue, Morgan. You and the men. I was shocked. If the doctor had come to talk with Silver the day before, as Morgan said, and if Silver had the map to the treasure, then it was clear to me that the doctor had given it to him. And I couldn't for the life of me understand why. Get them in. We're going to dig and get the treasure. Ah, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Ah. And the ship, John Silver. Where is the ship? Now we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But first, to the treasure. Come on, Jim Hawkins, you're coming with us.